Hey guys, it's Jamie from Warlord Games here, and today I'm going to be showing you how I painted the KV-1 and KV-2 kit. If you are interested in picking up this kit, please check out the link in the video description below, and it would also really help us out if you could remember to like, comment and subscribe. As you can see, this kit contains two full turrets, allowing me to use the vehicle as two different variants, and is therefore usable throughout the entire war. A vehicle produced by the Soviet Union, it also saw action in the captured capacity in both Finnish and German forces. The kit also includes a driver figure as well as 8 infantry, which can be used as tank riders or elsewhere in your forces. A fully detailed and varied decal sheet is included, which can be used to individualise your vehicle for any of the forces in which the KV was used. It is also worth noting that other Soviet kits include decals that can also be used on the KV, and we stock a range of metal crew should you be painting a number of KVs and want to individualise them all. Today's video will concentrate on how to achieve the Russian green base coat and modulation. There is a full product list in the description below, so please enjoy the video. Also, please remember to check out the follow-up videos in the series to get your vehicles ready for your games of bolt action. First step when painting any model is to prime the model. In this case I've used a grey primer, as for my method of painting grey works best. And the method of painting that we're going to be concentrating on today is what is called modulation. Now modulation is a process of highlighting and shading using three or more different tones. We're going to be painting Russian green so I start with a really dark green and I use Vallejo Model Air's Camo Black Green. I apply this to roughly one third of the vehicle, concentrating on the lower parts of any panels, any panel lines or deep recesses, and around any detail. If a surface is horizontal, I treat it as though the centre of the surface is where the highlight will be, and therefore shade around the edges. You don't have to be 100% neat with this, as our highlights will help to feather out any mistakes we make. All the green paints that I used in this tutorial are available in Vallejo Air's Armoured Fighting Vehicle Russian Green Set. They are also available separately, should you wish for the larger pots. Now when painting fine detail like this, I use a PSI of around 20 and I do add a little bit of Vallejo Model Air's thinner just to make the paint flow smoother and more consistently. It's also worth noting that anything I do to a turret I also do to the body of the vehicle and the other turret even if I do not necessarily show it. So here you can see me working my way around all the panel lines on the back of the vehicle. around any hatches on the turrets and I also use this colour at the end of the gun to discolour it to simulate where shots have been fired. For my detail work I use an Iwata HPC Plus and for any varnish work I use my Sparmax. And here you can see what we're aiming for. You can see how I've shaded around any panels, at the bottom of any side plates, and where two parts meet. The next step is to apply Vallejo Model Air Russian Green to all the parts of the vehicle that remain grey. This is the main body colour, and what I will also do is put a little bit of this on top of the Camel Black Green. The Camel Black Green acts as a pre-shade, and therefore we get an extra tone by transitioning between the two colours. The modulation method of painting is very quick and very simple and allows me to get a force on the table quickly. It also provides a nice amount of contrast which means that your miniatures will look great on the tabletop.
The hatch on top of the vehicle gives me a great place to show off modulation by going through the three different shades on an almost vertical surface. And you can see here what I mean about horizontal plates. I'm treating the centre as if they are the areas that should be highlighted. Very often this is referred to as panel highlighting and it's a method that makes the vehicle pop on the gaming table. You can also see here as I've added some thinner to the paint to help it flow smoothly I will need to apply two or more shades. It's better to apply multiple thin coats than it is to apply one thick coat which might obscure detail or dry strangely. I really enjoy using the Vallejo model air paints and although I have added some thinner you do not necessarily have to as they will flow through an airbrush quite well without the need to add any. You can see here already we're getting a certain level of contrast between the two colours. If painting a force quickly or for a demonstration table we could just leave it there. However, I decide to add some light green to the Russian green and apply a final highlight which I add to roughly the top third of the vehicle or the most centre third of any horizontal plates. I highlight the centre of the gun with this colour and what I actually decided to do was I decided that a 50-50 mix didn't provide me with enough contrast so I added a little bit more light green and came back and did a final highlight. The KV-1 and the KV-2 provide a perfect base for this sort of painting due to the large plates and the size of the vehicle. You can see here on the back door the nice transition that we've made. Already the vehicle is starting to look interesting and detail is starting to pop. It's also worth noting that shadows look deeper when they're next to highlights and highlights look lighter when they're next to shadows. Therefore when applying modulation I try to keep this in mind so that for example on the side plate the highlight is at the top and on the horizontal plate above it it's right next to a shadow hopefully making that detail pop a little bit more. Once I'm happy with the amount of contrast I've achieved, I apply a coat of Vallejo Satin Varnish all over the vehicle. Now the reason for applying the Satin Varnish is we are about to work with an enamel paint, the white spirit in which can strip the paint. So we're going to use Ammo by Mikimenez's Enamel Odorless Thinner in a one-to-one -one mix with Ammo by Mikimenez's Brown for Dark Green Filter. Now what the filter is going to do is it's going to slightly tint the colour and blend our shades together. It's a very transparent paint which we apply all over the vehicle. Unlike a wash we don't want it to pull so what we're going to do is we're going to keep moving the paint so that it dries evenly all over the vehicle. It adds a richness and different tones to the vehicle making it more realistic and interesting. For this you want to use a round brush so that you don't end up with any streaks and you also want to use quite a large brush. Now when working with enamels I always suggest that you work with cheap acrylic brushes rather than expensive Kalinsky Sable brushes because the white spirit will damage the brushes over time. You can see here the difference in tones between the right of the vehicle which has had a filter applied and the left of the vehicle which is just the bare acrylic. The right is much more interesting and much more rich in depth. I recommend leaving this filter to dry overnight as you can't apply any acrylic on top of wet white spirit. 
And whilst it's drying, I just keep an eye on it to make sure that I'm moving the pigment so that it doesn't pour. Once dry, we've achieved a great Russian green base and we're ready to move on to details. The next video, we'll look at painting the details, applying decals, applying a wash, and also doing some enamel streaking effects. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. Please feel free to ask me any questions you like. I'll try and answer them personally. And please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you next time where we'll continue painting this vehicle.